Good morning. I am Reverend Heather Miner. I'm the pastor here at North Long Beach Christian Church. And today is more informal conversations and meditations around poems that have been offered by the people of North Long Beach, uh, words that have inspired them as they have journeyed on. Will you pray with me? Lord, I ask that my meditations this morning they would be acceptable to you, O oh Lord. Amen. When we met on Monday for our Bible study, we had two poems shared and a song. The song was sung to the tune of Danny Boy, and it spoke about grace. And as Patrick described why it meant so much. He talked about a time in his life that was really difficult when he lost his job. And as you may know, anyone out there who has lost a job, when you lose your job, you lose your community and you lose your identity. And it's one of those dark times of the soul when you are traveling, wondering, who am I and who am I meant to be? Well, as he prayed during that time, he had a epiphany. And that was that this was a time when he had been given a different assignment. And God changed his heart from feeling all the mourning of loss, which he still felt, but he changed it to have him stop wallowing in that and instead accept his new assignment. And Patrick talked about his how his assignment was to pray, to pray for those who were, this was right before the pandemic, so during the pandemic, to pray for those who cared for those who came to the hospital, and not only here, but around the world. And his prayers, his prayer life took off, and he felt connected in a way he hadn't been before. What poem and scripture and God can do through those is to turn our hearts, our minds, to take tragedy and turn it into an assignment, an opportunity to serve God. We know God doesn't give tragedy. God's not out there trying to make our lives hard, but our lives are hard. In fact, those are the words that start the book, The Road Less Traveled, which Scott Peck wrote because of a poem uh, which Bob spoke of or gave to us as the one that has guided his life. And the poem is The Road Less Traveled, and it's by Robert Frost. And one of the phrases in there is this. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I wonder, as you look beyond, behind or at your past, I wonder about those times when you had to take, make a choice. Maybe it was to stand up for yourself in a new way. Maybe it was to leave behind an old situation. Maybe it was to become who you were meant to be, even though it was different from what the world expected you to be. Life is hard, writes Scott Peck. And yet when you read these words from Robert Frost, you read in them, there's a victory of having chosen a way less traveled. Another poem that meant a lot to Elnora and I had and Howard will be reading on uh, Sunday, both Elnora and Howard, I hope, will work together to read the, the poem, It's Still I Rise, 
And it has that refrain, still I rise, still I rise, I rise, I rise. And you get that at the end of her poem. But in the middle of it are these words. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awfully hard, because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. And throughout the poem, Angelou describes her laugh, her thighs hold diamonds, and she uses this imagery of wealth to describe her own self. She sees herself in a way where at a time when society wanted to beat down and, and put a different identity, and yet, and I can only think of this, that it comes from God, she was able to transform that vision into one of her beauty, of her thighs holding diamonds, of her laugh being like gold mines. Can we do that too, people of God? Can we change the imagery of ourselves from what is being beaten into us or beaten down upon us? Can we rise up with what God sees of us? Can we laugh with abandon, not worrying about if our laugh is too loud? Can we dance without worrying about who we look cool? Well, that's for me, white people, but you know, can we dance and just let ourselves delight in how God has made us to be and to move in this world? Some of us have been moved very deeply by religious songs and poems. One of those songs is I Stand at the Door by Stan Shoemaker. And it describes one who decides, again, there you go, makes a choice. Do not go through the door that leads to heaven or stay outside the door or stay outside in the world, but to stand at that door. That that would be his assignment. And he writes, somebody must be by the door to tell all those people out there, to tell them that they are spoiled for the old life. They have seen too much. One taste of God and nothing but God will do anymore. One taste of God and nothing but God will do anymore. I reflect on that and want that to be want that to fill my soul because I recognize how many times I run after things that aren't of God. And I recognize that even though he says only God will do anymore, I mean, as much as I try for that to be completely true, I struggle. Because it's easier to hold on to things here. And there is always still, I think, a fear of that moment when we have to let go of all that we know and have and take hold of the eternal one. And I often see life as this journey from being born here and living, learning to live in the world, and then learning to let go of the world as we move to our heavenly home. A journey from earth to heaven. And the more of God that we have here on earth, I think the easier that transition is. And more than that, we often talk about we want heaven to come to earth. Well, then we become the purveyors of that. We become the ones through which people can see God. And as I looked at words that meant something to me, I often come down to the hymns. 
Yes, I think many of our people do. I think I've got three people singing different songs on Sunday as we share our songs and poems that have inspired us through the years of our living. And one of those songs is Be Thou My Vision. And here are two of the verses. It's Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence, my light. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. High King of Heaven, my treasure thou art. And for me, that speaks of my inmost desire that I be able to think the thoughts of God. <laughs> maybe not all, but maybe a portion, just a little portion, that I might fall asleep thinking of God and I might wake up thinking of God, that God would be first in my heart. You know, it has been a very busy October. I've tried many new things, entered communities that are unfamiliar to me. And a lot of that has been tiring on my soul. I understand now when I read words from like Michelle Obama, who said she wanted to go to a school where there were people whose skin color was hers. It is hard being part of communities that are different from the one you've grown up within. It takes energy. It takes consciousness. It takes a humility an awareness of that humility that we don't always walk around with, not in our day to day. And so it was important that I find my quiet time in the morning once again. I had given it up, you see, given it up to the busyness, to the doings, to the managing of my life and church life. But with the help of my pastor coach, I reclaimed my morning time. Sometimes I read a book that just allows me to reflect deeper, like a Thomas Merton book. Other times I write in a journal. One of the ways I love to connect with God is to think about how my doings and comings and goings, how God is in those, in all of them. And sometimes I would just quietly pray. But it changes. And I allow it to change. It doesn't have to be one thing or another. But it needs to be time with God, to let God be Lord of my heart, to let God be my light, to let God be first in my heart. Because in coaching, we talk about this. We talk about a shift. We're always looking for a shift from a person will come in and they'll describe how overwhelmed they are by all the things they have to do. And when the shift happens, it's no longer overwhelmed, but it becomes like, here's what I can do. Here's what I'm called to do. Like Patrick told us, instead of mourning what he lost, he turned it into a God assignment. But who did that for? Patrick, who allows us to make that shift? In coaching, we, we don't talk enough, I think, about the divine, but it is that connection with God that allows us to shift our awareness from all that we have to do to what God is enabling us to do. 
keep sight, my friends, of your first love. Hold tight to the one who sees your thighs like diamonds and your laugh like an oil well. Allow God to make you, or allow you to choose a path less traveled. And as a final thought from Monica, who chose the Desert Dorada by Max Ehrman, whether it's clear, whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Be at peace, my friends, and may God's love hold you and lead you and guide you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>